Welcome everyone, Costini here with a discussion about the Empire in Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires. With Thrones of Decay we are hopefully going to get a full rework for the Empire going forward. One of the biggest problems that the Empire has is that all the campaign mechanics that they have, be it the Electricon system that Gelt and Carl Franz have to deal with, or the Books of Nagash that Volkmar has to deal with, or the hostility meter that um, the Huntsman Marshal has to deal with, they're all pretty terrible. So regardless of who you're playing, Franz, Gelt, Volkmar, or uh, Marcus Wolfhart, their campaigns are pretty terrible because of the campaign system. So those campaign systems need to be updated. Books on the Gash are uh, also an issue that the Tomb Kings have to deal with, and yes, Manfred, for all the hate that can be thrown against them. Uh, Though it kind of makes the most sense, believe it or not, with Manfred, because everyone hates him, so it does make sense that he'd go to war against everyone, but no, not even there, really. It's it's a pretty broken system and needs really an update. And we've seen with the Chaos Dwarves, with Artifacts in Realms of Chaos, how it can be done better, because you can get those with Alliances, Artifacts with Alliances, or hell, even Forek has a better situation, because you can also get those through Military Alliance, you can get the Artifacts he's looking for. Why this isn't the case for the Tomb Kings or for the Books and the Gash in general is really odd, just really needs an update. But regardless of what Creative Assembly does decide to do, the electric count system in particular needs to be fixed, especially because it's likely we're going to get the Dark Lady of Known as a new Legendary Lord. How they'll balance that out with three Legendary Lords starting over here in this part of the Empire, I have no idea. I guess they could potentially move Gel to another starting position in Empire further north to deal with some other issues, but um, and just have this campaign being fought like have known deal with the situation over here potentially that that is just an idea there's also a significant imbalances between knowledge and lords like consider gelt versus carl france C gelt can colonize mountains carl france can't gelt has much more campaign potential as he has had for a long time maybe it's just my perspective but i feel like carl france should be the best legendary lord of the empire like or at least good enough to justify, like you look at Tyrion, sure, he isn't necessarily the best Alarial wins in the long term, but Tyrion is really powerful, no one disputes that. Just as no one would dispute that Carl Franz is actually really weak right now, even for his own race. Like the balancing between the Legendary Lords needs to be improved, the systems of the campaign need to be improved. In particular, the electro electoral count system. Some kind of political system would make sense on electoral college as opposed to the electoral count system, because right now the system is just a pain in the neck. You either abuse it by taking territory and give it to, giving it to another electoral council, declaring war unknown, giving the territory to Averheim, triggering the event, getting infinite imperial authority, or you're dealing with a really annoying system, especially because like Ostermark, Cockland, Talibium, Sterling, Averland, they're all going to be wiped out or put on the back foot very, very quickly when in a campaign because Draka is over here, Vlad is over here, Azag is over here, Festus is over here. So the Empire is under a lot of threats. They really need to change the system in such a way that's not so ridiculously punishing because what ends up in a campaign is that the early game of the campaign is pure misery. Either you abuse it, either you abuse the system, in which case it's really dull and boring to deal with, or you don't abuse it, in which case you're dealing with a lot of pain and suffering in your campaign. That's just for Gelt and Karl Franz. Volkmar has the pain of the books, and the Hans Marshall has the pain of the hostility meter. And it's not great, regardless of which campaign you play. System really needs an improvement. In fact, I would dare say that the system, the system we had before the electoral count system was in many ways better. Yes, there are better rewards right now with all the items and all the units. So the Empire can be pretty decent, and I emphasize decent were not great. They're gr not a great faction to play even the late game, but they can be decent enough in the late game. But really, the early game is a really painful experience to uh, deal with if you're playing an Imperial uh, campaign at the moment. So the systems are not great. On top of that, what are the other issues of the Empire? Well, their generals of the Empire are pretty terrible as lords. Arch Electors and Hunts Marshall are decent enough with, well, the situation being with Hunts Marshall is that as a ranged lord, they're not great. Same with ranged heroes. Uh, the captains are pretty crap. The mages are okay. The witch hunters, not really that great. Like, 
it's like a mix of decent with the arch lectors and warrior priests uh, and the mages with the really bad, like the captains and the witch hunters being in particular really, really bad. On top of that, on top of that situation, another problem the Empire has is that their unit roster in particular is pathetic on the campaign map. See, in Tier 1, the only unit you really want to recruit, and they're not good units, are archers. Everything else, like spearmen, free company militia, swordsmen, are not good units. Even for Volkmar, who gets benefits for free company militia, they're just not worth recruiting. T this situation remains the case in Tier 2, with the only decent unit being the Spearman with Shields. You can argue for Imperial Knights and Pistoliers, but really with Cavalry, you would be much better off at Tier 3 with Outriders with Grenade Launchers, uh, regular Outriders, and Knights of the Blazing Sun, or Tier 4 with Demi Griff Knights, or Reichsguard if you want to go down that particular par path. Though there's, I never see really a reason to bother with Cavalry as the Empire, with the exception like some uh, Pistoliers or Outriders for skirmishing or all to harass the enemy and draw the AI into attacking my entrenched position. I never see a reason to get Imperial Knights or Reichsguard or even Knights of the Blazing Sun. I mean, Knights of the Blazing Sun are good, but they're really expensive unless you own Talibium, which good luck with that because Festus is going to annihilate it. So always in an Imperial campaign, the only Cavalry really worth getting are the Demigraphs. And only in limited numbers. Uh, the units that you actually do want to recruit as the Empire is our great swords, hunts and huntsmen, uh, great cannons, and hellstorms. That's effectively your army with some demigrics for, uh, thrown in the mix. It does work, but things do get pretty stale. Another issue with the unit roster, beyond the fact like a lot of the early game units are really weak and they'll just get obliterated by anyone they're dealing with. They're not so cheap, like you consider nasty skulkers, they're not only really powerful, they're really, really cheap. Like there's much better melee and range units available in campaign. Uh, but another problem the Empire has is siege tactics. See, the only, the good siege units are either tier 4 from a regular settlement or if you control Nuln from tier 3, but that means taking Nuln, which is difficult for Gel both Geralt and Karl Franz. For the Dark Lady of Nuln, that's obviously going to be a different situation, but uh, it's still not a great situation to be limited even at tier 3, let alone tier 4, or to only be able to get good artillery at tier 3 from a very specific settlement. So I think Imperial uh, Artillery should be easier to access in a campaign or move the Great Cannons, like move this entire chain to Tier 2, uh, Tier 2, so you can get like Hellstorms at Tier 3. I mean, the cost will preclude you from getting these in large numbers anyway. Uh, move Great Cannons in particular Tier 2, the Imperial situation will vastly improve. The siege problem is pretty awful to deal with. Otherwise, because you have to end up using a lot of bullshit tactics where you just recruit a mass of archers and crossbowmen and huntsmen, park them outside the settlements, settlement walls, and just try and kill as much in sight. And if you run out of ammunition, withdraw, attack again, you can do this in the same turn and win the day. Like the, the way to play an Imperial campaign in the best possible way is just so terrible. Like we can talk about cheese, but here's the thing. The most optimal way for quite a few races can be a great deal of fun. Sure, you can cheese it, and certain cheeses are not so great, but for a, va a lot of races, especially the good ones, you can achieve a great deal without either resorting to cheese, just playing it normally and having a good amount of power. For the Empire, that really isn't the case. Their economy is decent, but nothing to really talk home about, like the dwarves, yes, the dwarves can end up re uh, making a better economy, though you do have a much better early economy than the dwarves do have, they just beat you in terms of scalability. Maybe the imperial campaign, uh, imperial economy in terms of scalability could be improved upon, I would argue, because right now you just get the tailor's guild, then you get trade resources, and then paved roads, and that's pretty much it. And paved roads require you to get to tier 4 for 8% income in the local province or 4% at tier 3. That really isn't a great situation to be dealing with. Like, it's not a bad economy, but it's not wonderful. It's just a mediocre. Like, that's the thing. Like, the Empire starts in a bad uh, state with their limitations on units, artillery, all that early on. And they only reach a mediocre state later on in the campaign, even with all of the items that you can get from the electric counts and all of the units you can get from the electric counts, which, by the way, those units can be pretty expensive. I mean, of course, 
right? You can, of course, get play as Volkmar and get a great deal of upkeep benefits, sure, uh, with respect to that. Uh, and, of course, if you own all the electric counts, uh, uh, stay, uh, seats, you do get a significant upgrade for all those units. But still, there's a lot of downsides to playing the Empire, and I just don't think the effort for the payoff is worth it. And it should be worth it. Like, that's the thing, right? We need a reason to play. Like, the Empire is the most popular faction, the Lord. It's the, probably the most modded one. And I have a suspicion that the reason the Creative Assembly hasn't really focused too much on fixing the Empire is because they know there's been a lot of mods out there but even the mods can only go so far like we need the system rebuilt from the ground up though there are mods that do vastly improve it even if they're not going to change the electric count system there are ways to improve it like the problem with electric counts is not just like oh you have to keep these guys alive you don't because you can abuse it but you also can't get defensive alliances you can't get military alliances they can't ally each other Unless you're not playing the Empire where they're not restricted by these things. And the Empire actually ends up being better if you're not playing any of the Imperial campaigns, shockingly enough. So there are vast improvements that can be made. Uh, some improvements to economy. The research tree could use some work to be quite genuine about it. Like, it does really feel outdated in quite a few ways. So research could be updated. Heroes could be updated. Some lords could be updated. Like, it just feels like a race that has been neglected for a very, very long time. It only got one, pay well, it got two paid DLCs, but the first one was really a unit on Lord Pack. That's it. Uh, like, you you got lore, you got the Lord Choice, uh, you got some units, you got Regiments of Renown with Volkmar. With the Hunts Marshal, you did get kind of a minor rework, minor rework, but it just isn't good enough to keep the Empire competitive. And the Empire has been behind many other races from Warhammer 2 for a very long time and then you look at the races the better races in Warhammer 3 yeah they're pretty crap like it is amazing that we can get the race as the high elves which have never gotten a rework I might add you can get uh, uh, though they did and in fact creative assembly nerfed them from Warhammer 2 to Warhammer 3 with entrepreneur nerf and yet the high elves are still one of the best races in the game whereas the empire is one of the worst races in the game so clearly there are ways where this can work you want to see how a, how the empire could work like for all the issues grand cafe has in terms of casualty replenishment limitations limited unit roster and like grand cafe is a lot better to play right now than empire actually is uh, so maybe take some ideas from grand cafe some from the cast orbs resource and political system from the cast orbs it would make sense to have the electric jockeying for power and influence and maybe you could <clears throat> have a system that where you're trying to support various areas in the empire to keep the foes in check as a put and also fighting your campaign on a local level that would just be a theory uh, of mine of how they could do it also we got to keep in mind what happened in the end times like the entire empire came together to uh, build a bastion like maybe having something like that where you are building up the defenses of the empire trying to work together where everyone is committing to this in exchange for rewards and it helps buff up the electro accounts that could also work potentially to make the entire race far more viable as for the hunts marshall and volkmar they do need specific uh fixes in their own campaigns books on the gash and hostility like with hostility i think what would be really important with hostility or with that campaign well more more climate types more climate suitability especially mountains would be a significant difference uh, but also the ability to eventually remove the hostile meter after a certain point in your campaign. Um, and then with it just or not ha not having the enormous penalties you do suffer there in terms of controlling the rogue armies that spawn for Volkmaria yeah, just the fixes with the books of Nagash. It's a systems issue, it's a roster issue, it's uh, with units, heroes and lords with the exception of arch lectures. Uh, there's just all kinds of problems. Maybe with the what I'm thinking about, though, is that it's quite possible that with the Thrones of Decay, we might get a kind of mage lord uh, choice for the Empire, because we're likely going to get um, a mage legendary lord with respect to that, but we'll see how all of that plays out. And, maybe, and hopefully a new hero choice and improved captains. That, that would be pretty important for units. Uh, just having swordsmen, uh, like early game swordsmen, like these units being able to hold their own 
would be very welcome because right now the only units that are worse are like early game Bretonian infantry units and Bretonia has a lot of other tools that can make it work like Bretonia has early game artillery has pretty effective cavalry in that can stand and win in a melee fight like Empire does too but it just ends up working better for Bretonia because they can knock down the walls and open pathways for their cavalry to take those elements just some note some ideas over there of what uh, creative assembly could do many other things of course uh, to talk about like just the design of the campaigns really weighs them down the resources that you have in the campaigns the imperial authority it's like it's all pretty terrible right now so we'll see what ca does end up doing Christine here signing out don't forget to subscribe like and enable notifications and stay tuned for more